with two of the four fearless women and the South African cannot wait to introduce you to Dumi Patele and Alda Weddle. Uh, I mean, with mountain peaks that are unimaginable, these women are about to conquer them. Welcome. Morning. I have to say, I could never. I think I, I can conquer, I don't know, maybe not having chocolate for the week <laughs> or I don't know, not having like cool drink. <laughs> but mountain climbing, how, when did you make the decision that you want to actually conquer this, Alda? So I think the, my mountaineering started in 2008 and it's always been a dream to do Everest. Mm -hmm. So uh, about a year ago, we started getting a team together and uh, Tumi and I are two of the four ladies. Right. And then uh, we were one at one of our technical training camps at Vata von Boerfen earlier this year. And uh, Tumi brought a pie to a braai and yeah. had this bright idea to climb to the nine. Oh, it was her bright idea. It was idea. Her bright idea. <laughs> okay. Uh, to do the nine big challenge. Right. So uh, it didn't take a lot of convincing. Um, and we're going on the 22nd of August. We're doing the nine highest peaks in each province. Mm -hmm. There's a time limit. Um, there is no female record at the moment. Mm -hmm. So, but we want to, you know, go as fast as we can without yeah. injuries because right. we've got a, a training program ahead of us doing Mont Blanc for technical training up and going. I can go for apologies, right. and then uh, Everest next year. So uh, we want to be fast, yeah. but safe. And, and to me, I mean, I'm sure you started the training process in preparation for for the peaks. But did you ever anticipate that it would be sort of this rigorous? If it is, as a strenuous, did you ever imagine it would be this experience you're having? Yes, I have imagined that it was going to be this hectic. Um, look, the the mountain itself uh, needs a lot of uh, effort from us. It it will take a hell of a lot for us yeah. to actually get to to summit. Mount, Mount Everest. So doing the nine, the nine peaks helps us to stay focused on the training and you, you know the kind of mental preparation that we have to do for Mount, Mount Everest. Doing the nine peak actually helps us a lot. Right. But also the the fiscal challenge. The nine the nine peak challenge is really a big ch challenge. Yeah. It it might look like it's actually not, but it do, it will take a hell of a lot to prepare. But it it will also take a hell of a lot to actually complete. Let's talk so, about those challenges then, because I think for someone who thinks, oh, this looks glamorous, or, you know, peaking mountains, this is something I could do. Take me through the, the, the physical and also the, the mental strain that you need to prepare for, or at least that you've gone through while you're preparing. So the rules are quite tough um, because it's to me and I, mm -hmm. it's two of us and we have to do the driving, the climbing, the navigating, all of it. And you're doing it at time, so you have to push as many mountains in as little time. So the first few, um, we start with Iron Crown in Limpopo, um, then we go to the Berg in Mapumalanga, I hope I remember the sequence. Mm -hmm. So, and then carry on. The big ones um, becomes 20 hours. We, Mafari, mm -hmm. which is the highest peak in South Africa, we track 12 hours up and eight down. Ooh. And we have to continuously go. And there's about four or five of the mountains you actually track at night. Um, and it's interesting because some of them got really high ladders, 50 plus ladders, and it will be Tumi and I doing it. And then we have to get in a car and we have to drive. So we want to be safe, um, so there need to be some resting time, but we're also challenging it. Right. And we thought it's a great challenge because it will, there will be weather challenges, there will be fatigue challenges, you know, making sure that we put our names up there. Right. But like Timmy said, it keeps us focused because now you work so hard to get some, you know, to that, mm. that ultimate peak. Right. Yeah. And are there any fears that you have to overcome uh, while going through, you know, this training, or at least preparing yourself for this challenge? And it, we might be underestimating this, but the cold, uh, especially in the top three peaks, the, the 3000ers, uh, Mafari, Namahari, and uh, the, the one in the Eastern Cape, uh, Guaduma, those, those peaks are really, really cold. So, yeah. And remember, we are taking on this challenge in August. It will right. still be cold. Mm -hmm. And some of the peaks might even have snow. So we might we, we must be able to 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 actually climb even at night yeah. uh, in the snow in in, in very heavy winds. Uh, we have we have seen uh, footages where uh, some of the people that have done the challenge actually had to to battle re really hectic winds. Sure. So we have to be prepared for that as well. Yeah, and and, and I'm glad that you put safety first, which yeah. is of paramount importance to you, but uh, have you had to have any health checks perhaps with your doctor first before going? Because I mean, I think we can all do anything, but I think you need to be in the right healthy 
state of mind and also your body needs to be able to take whatever that you're about to go against wherever you're going. So is it advisable to perhaps check with your GP if you know you're okay and healthy yeah. to sort of summit and also take on whatever weather conditions will be encountering? No, definitely. Um, you have to look after yourself. Um, I don't eat specifically, so I do eat the chocolate. But <laughs> training is it's very, very important. Yeah. You have to be your ultimate fit, uh, best. Um, to me as an endurance athlete, I'm not so much, but I'm working really hard. Yeah. She's keeping me very motivated. Um, but yeah, you need to make sure you're in sound body, but sound mind as well, because um, any mountain, um, any challenge is need man uh, mental strength as right. well. Right, yeah. And as an endurance athlete, do me for yourself, I mean, how important is it for you to do this? What sort of life lessons? I mean, it's a physical sort of challenge, um, but what life lessons do you attribute uh, to being active like this? Mm. Being an, an endurance athlete means you have to be consistent in your uh, training. And during an, an, an endurance event, you have to dig deep. And an endurance event, by definition, is long. So you have to actually stay the course. Yeah. You have to dig deep and, uh, and, and make sure that you actually finish. So that's part of the strength that I'm, I'm, I'm actually able to bring to a challenge as this one yeah. um, and understanding and knowing what it takes to to almost feel like you can go on right but then you have to go on yeah so but there's 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 part of a uh, endurance life in a way sure we'll be cheering you on and we're so proud of you thank you for doing it for us women <laughs> i couldn't have chosen a better group of women to represent yeah. us because your record is our record you know how it goes where you win was like South African women have done it, but you guys face the effort, so thank can you so I, much. Can I also close? Uh, yes. We, we do raise funds. We have a crowdfunding platform uh, okay. called GoFundMe, uh, Everest 2020 SA. And our, hash, our hashtags or our, uh, on Twitter is at Everest 2020 SA, yep. same as Facebook. So that's how we can support that's you, by yes. going to the crowdfunding and donating. Yes. All right, thank you so much for the important information. I wish you all the best. And thank, thank you. you for coming on to the morning show. We'll leave it at that. Make sure you go uh, to their social media pages, support. Uh, also go to the crowdfunding page and make sure that you pledge there and uh, you donate as well as much as you can so that we can motivate our ladies. For that though, we're going to take a short break. We'll be back afterwards.